Field about the arc flash hazard. It doesn't talk about what is supposed to be on the label. Are you required to comply with 70E? Well, Kind of yes, if you have to comply with OSHA and you have to comply with OSHA whenever there's going to be employees working on the premises and it gets kind of convoluted and pretty much that you're going to have to have that label at some point when if there was a failure, there was a problem, they're going to go back and look. Did you have the label? If not, then you violate OSHA. You didn't comply with 70E requirements. Now, let's take a look at what 70E might say. 7E label, arc warning, arc flash hazard, flash protection boundary. It gives you a flash protection boundary. And I can't remember what that flash protection boundary is. Kevin, you had a 7E. I just saw you carrying a little while ago, right? Yes. Do you know anything about 7E? Not much. You just I carry just the book. Have, I just like Let me see. The, show, the, show us the book here so we can <laughs> show us how important you are. You, it looks like you should be faded on one side and put it on the, the, the dash of the pickup truck there. <laughs> At least you walk around, you look like, oh, man, this guy's smart. I thought you were smart. And I saw you carrying. I'm like, oh, maybe I can ask him a question. You know, this arc flash boundary is, is, a, is in the 70E, and then there's a risk hazard category number two, incident energy four to eight, Caliber centimeters at 18 inches working distance, and this is on the line side, this is on the load side. The problem is this. You put a flash boundary, or you put an arc flash hazard label on there, nobody understands what that label is talking about. A qualified person is defined in NFPA 70E as, and part of that definition states that the employee is one who has received safety training to identify and avoid the hazards involved. That understanding requires knowing what the different parts of an arc flash label are and what they mean. There are various parts of the arc flash label that are required by NFPA 70E Article 130.5 as well as specific equipment that must have the label. These pieces of equipment include switchboards, panel boards, industrial control panels, meter socket enclosures, uh, motor control centers that are in other than dwelling units, and uh, so basically any panel that is likely to require examination, adjustment, servicing, or maintenance while energized is going to require a label. If the equipment's likely not to be serviced or maintained while energized, then the label is not required and should not have an arc flash label applied. The next page shows a breakdown of the arc flash label and the information that is required. Number one, danger or warning header. A common guideline is to use danger header when the voltage is over 600 volts or when the incident energy is over 40 calories per centimeter squared. If it is less than the, the, that threshold, an orange warning header is typically used. Secondly, incident energy is the corresponding working distance. The Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers, IEEE, defines this as the dimension between the possible arc point and the head and body of the worker positioned in place to perform the assigned task. Number three, minimum arc rating is the incident energy. It's a measurement in calories per centimeter squared or joules per centimeter squared of thermal energy at a working distance from an arc fault. Number four is the arc flash boundary. This is the shortest distance at which a person working at the time of the arc flash may receive permanent injury, which is the onset of a second degree burn or worse, if not properly protected by the arc resistant or flame resistant clothing. PPE, or personal protective equipment, each hazard risk category requires a different level of protection. Categories range from 1 to 4. Category 0 was removed in the NFPA 70E 2015 edition. Number 6, limited approach and restricted approach fields. These are shock hazard approach boundaries. These boundaries are defined in more detail in our Arc Flash Workplace Safety Guideline. The prohibited approach was boundary was removed in the 2015 NFPA 70 edition as well. Number seven, shock risk when the cover is removed. The nominal voltage of the equipment must be listed on the label as well. The nominal voltage of a circuit or system is a nominal value assigned to the circuit or system for the purpose of conveniently designating its voltage class. For example, the nominal rural residential voltage in the U.S. is 120 volts, although the voltage may actually range from 114 to 126 volts. The arc flash boundary is the approach limit 
at a distance from a pers pr from a prospective arc source where which a person could receive a second degree burn if an electrical arc flash were to occur. A second degree burn is possible by exposing unprotected skin to an electrical arc flash above the incident energy level of 1.2 calories per centimeter squared. This is uh, 5 joules per centimeter squared. The arc flash boundary is determined either through calculation or through the use of available tables within NFPA 70E. The boundary separates an area uh, in which a person is possibly exposed to a second degree injury from an area in which potential for injury does not include a second degree burn. Be aware arc flash burns may still occur outside the arc flash boundary, but they should not be a second degree burn or worse. The arc flash boundary defines the point at which arc rated PPE is necessary to avoid a second degree burn. All body parts closer to an arc flash hazard than the arc flash boundary must be protected from potential thermal effects of the hazard. For example, if uh, an employee's hand and arm is within the arc flash boundary, these hand and arm must be protected from the thermal hazard. If the employee's head is also within the arc flash boundary, the employee's head, including the back of the head, must be protected as well from the, uh, from the thermal hazard through the use of proper PPE. The average employee should not be expected to calculate an incident energy value or to determine whether a job complies with the NFPA 70E arc flash PPE categories method. However, the employee should be capable of reading and interpreting the information included on an arc flash hazard equipment label if part of his or her set of responsibilities includes performing energized work. It is the employer's responsibility to provide the employee's performing work tasks with the information they need to work safely. Part of this is ensuring that arc flash hazard equipment labels are in place and that the employee has the information necessary to select the appropriate PPE based on the label. Incident energy. The incident energy is defined as the amount of thermal energy impressed upon a surface. It's a certain distance from a source generated during an electrical arc event. The incident energy is typically expressed in calories per centimeter squared as previously mentioned in the United States. And outside of the United States and in many other places of the world, the energy is expressed in joules per centimeter squared. Incident energy calculations are based on the available thermal energy only and does not calculate the severity of any of the other hazards previously mentioned. ASTM International, formerly known as American Society for Testing of Materials, is an international standards organization. Now, this organization develops and publishes voluntary consensus technical standards for a wide range of materials, products, systems, and services. ASTM standards require PPE ratings to be in calories per centimeter squared rather than joules per centimeter squared. Joules per meter squared or calories per square inch. Regardless of the unit of measurement, selection of proper PPE dictates that the incident energy and PPE thermal rating must be expressed using the same term. Predicting the amount of available incident energy is crucial when selecting appropriate PPE. Properly rated PPE prevents injury from melting or burning clothing or from direct skin exposure due to the increased temperature during an arc fault. Using PPE rated above the calculated incident energy value can raise the probability of being protected. PPE ratings are based on a 50% probability that a second degree burn will not occur. So arc rated equipment that is used at less than its rating offers no chance of protection. The word incident in the phrase incident energy, it's used as an adjective to mean falling or striking on a surface. Here the surface area is the human body in the direction of the energy flow.